In this video, I'm fishing with the world's smallest lure. I've been to every tackle shop within a 50 mile radius and have combed the corners of the internet and I'm convinced these are the smallest lures known to man. Now the challenge is simple. With every fish that we catch, the baits will continue to get smaller. Our goal is to simply catch the biggest fish that we can on the smallest of lure. Can we do it? Let's find out. And this right here is the lure we're starting out with. This is the biggest one we're gonna be using all day and it's a topwater bait. So we're not holding back on any of the action. We're jumping right into some exciting stuff. You ever seen a spook that small? No. These are some tiny baits we're gonna be using in today's video. And remember, they're only gonna get smaller as the video goes. And at the very end, we're gonna be trying to catch a fish using this small hook. What I believe to be the world's smallest hook. It is micro. But that said, I'm excited to see if we can catch something on this. And I got this brand new ultra light two piece rod I got from Bass Pro. This thing is as whippy as it gets. And really that's all I can use for these super light baits. So if we get a big fish on, it's gonna take us for a ride. Oh, it looks so good. That looks like money, daddy. It's looking pretty good, brother. I don't think it's gonna be long before we catch one on this. And what's wild is- Oh, that, oh, 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 that was quick. That was literally the third cast. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is about to get interesting. Try not to lose it. Oh, what about that? Oh, oh, oh I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh, it's a good one. Let's go. It's a good one. Look at this rod bend. Look at this rod bend. Get him, I'm afraid to flip him. I'm afraid to flip him. Get him, 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 get him. Oh, let's go. I knew if I got it up under that tree, we would catch something. Dang, brother, that was crazy. Did you get that on video? He smoked it, that I got great. it. All right, we gotta be careful here. I don't wanna get smoked with a treble. So the biggest lure in this challenge is officially knocked off. Exactly, now we're about to move on to something even smaller than this. And our ultimate goal is to catch a big fish on one of these small baits. That right there is the first one. That's not the biggest one we're going after. By golly, number one is down on the little spook. Let's get him back. There he goes. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's freaking go. Can I make another couple casts with this before we move on? You can. Come okay. on. Okay. Right, here's a fish. Guarantee it. No cuts on this video. Ah, freak. <laughs> There's a cut. Right here's a fish. No cuts on this video. Let's see if it happens. Oh well. Not the direction I was going. Watch this. Still gonna be a fish. Oh, he got it! He got it! He got it! He got it! <laughs> Let's go! That's not even, that's a bluegill. Oh, it's a bluegill, get him. Yeah, it's a blue, some kind of bluegill, let's freaking go. This thing is awesome, brother. <laughs> that was crazy. That little spook is deadly in general. Oh, oh whoa. Oh, 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 watch out. Forget the challenge, you should just use that spook when you're micro fishing. I'm telling you, brother, that thing is deadly. Check that out, the nice little hybrid. Here we go, we're gonna turn her back. There it goes. Now this next bait is just a tad bit smaller than the last one. It's a little grasshopper, a little rebel creek hopper, I think is what it's called. I mean, this is about as natural as it possibly gets out here. We're surrounded by just fields teeming with cattle and all kinds of livestock. Grasshoppers are freaking everywhere, okay? I feel like this should get bit, especially if the top water got bit. I feel like this one is about to work, but I guess we just have to find out. How big of a fish can we catch with this? That's the question. That's what we're really shooting for. Do small baits only catch small fish? Well, welcome back to the episode of Fear Factor. Or, what's that called? Uh, Mythbuster, yeah, that one. That's the one we're trying to replicate here. First cast with the grasshopper. Where should I cast? Probably right over here where I got bit last, would you say? Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh. that that looks oh, awesome. Oh, son. That looks good. That is the juice. Zach's over here eyeing our future baits. Look at the baits, but you guys don't know what we're about to throw, and we got some really small stuff in there, so. What do you think, Zach? Is it pretty small? Here is tiny. Got some micro stuff in there. Zach knows all about that. Yeah, I know a lot about tiny stuff. A lot about tiny stuff. Oh, 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 oh. Bluegill, bluegill. Oh, did you see that kegger bluegill? Did you see that? It sounds like a 22 going off when you cast that <laughs> thing. Does. You gotta whip it out there, brother. Watch this, watch how much power I gotta give this and watch how far it goes. Didn't even make it to the bank. Oh, 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 they're hitting it on top. That one hit it on top. Bro, top water is on right now. Oh, 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 oh he got it right there. He got it, he got it. Oh my God, oh my God. Try it, get, oh, him. get him in the ball, let's freaking go. Oh my God, did you see that? Dude, he came up and literally swiped oh it my. right there. Look at that, now is that a pure bluegill? No, that's a hybrid. Look at that, guys. Two hooks right in the mouth. Grasshoppers do not stand a chance <laughs> against him. This is the place right here for the grasshopper. Big bluegill, big panfish in here. 
Thanks, buddy. All right, well, the grasshopper is down. We almost got a sick topwater eat right there on the grasshopper, so I don't know what's up next. We got to dig in the bag to find out. This has been pretty epic so far, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, the conditions are a little bit nicer today than they have been the previous day, so maybe the bite's just on. Now, on to the next bait. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it is really, really hot out here, but when it's this hot out and we're wanting to do stuff outside, that's a perfect time to pull out the Coolify. This here is my Coolify. If you can't tell behind me, it's harder than the devil's it's hot. If you're like me and you like to stay active, even when it's hot outside, whether it be fishing, golfing, working out, at the gym even, I don't like getting too hot. And that's where this thing comes in handy. Taurus Cool Fi is literally the inventors of personal air conditioners. This thing is truly indispensable when it comes to the summer heat. And Cool Fi is way different than other competitors. The upper six and lower two airways form a convection system, creating a 3D full body cold air surround. And even though the Cool Fi blows extremely cold air, it still has a really long battery life. But even if you need to charge it, you can just plug it up and just use it while you're charging it. That's really convenient. And they also have an app. It's super easy to use. You can pretty much do everything straight from your phone. I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but my back gets really hot and sweaty during the summer months. And that's where this thing comes in handy. Check that out. You see it running? Brother, I am cool as a cucumber. I highly recommend that you guys pick up one of these using the link in the description. Also use code TAURUS2024 and save yourself 20%. Huge shout out to Taurus for sponsoring this video and sending over this Coolify. I've been extremely satisfied with it i think you guys will as well with that said let's see if we can catch a fish on the next bait we're here with brian melbourne what's your pb i've caught him up to 13 pounds oh you caught a 13 pound bass yeah. oh my god do you think we could catch a five pounder on this i do not yeah that would be more like a goldfish not a chance not a chance no not a shot no hope that's brutal it's gonna be hard <laughs> No, no chance. Uh, is it just too small? Yeah, it looks too small. People don't believe in us, all right? People don't believe in us. We got people out here says they've caught 13 pounders, eight pounders. They don't think that I can make this challenge happen. Literally, they said, you can't do it. Goldfish. Yeah, that would be more like a goldfish. You know what I mean? They don't know that I am fishing with Tate. And if fishing with Tate knows how to do anything, it's how to handle small items, small things, okay? I can take small things and I can work wonders. But we've got a long way to go in this video to prove them wrong. We're gonna be out here slinging the micros. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm kinda nervous. Tell you this next one is what we call the small frog. In the package, it's got one little tiny hook, one little tiny frog. Let me get this out and show you how it compares to the last bait we used. So you can see right here, the grasshopper is bigger than the frog. Like I said, we're getting smaller the whole time. I think the challenge with this frog is that it's gonna be super light, and super light is really tough to cast sometimes. But that's why we got the ultra light setup. This baby can fling them out, it loads up good, and. Oh. Boing, 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 boing. So now, the little baby frog, the topwater bite seems to be on, so maybe, just maybe, we might catch a giant on this flipping thing, James. That would be sick. What if I caught a PB on this? And there's a ton of frogs in this pond, too, so if oh, it's gonna happen, I mean, talk about matching the hatch. That is literally matching the hatch. I would love nothing more than to catch a 10-pounder on this. That would be crazy. Now, Zach, are there 10-pounders are there in nah, here? Never been <laughs> spotted. <laughs> <laughs> never been spotted. That is until today. I've never been spotted, Daddy. It's just kind of like a Bigfoot. He ain't never been, well, Actually, Bigfoot has been spotted. Anyway, for the purposes of this video, there is 10 pounders in here, and we're about to catch one, so. <laughs> or should I just put it straight through and have it come through the back? Well, they, or you could nose hook it. Yeah. Ooh. Something comes up with short strikes, it's over. <laughs> Let us know right now, am I going to lose this frog before I catch something? The chances are above zero. Oh, oh I casted it. Here we go. This might just work. Is there any action at all? It doesn't look like there's any action. It's a dead baby frog. The wind's just pushing it across the top. I am trying to impart any action on this that I possibly can, because God knows they ain't a bit that's coming from it naturally. They took used rubber off an old tire, <laughs> put it in a mold, and said, let's make a lure. Threw some spray paint on it. They have eyeliner on that baby and said it's gold. I mean, it's pretty cheap. I thought it was like a dollar, wouldn't it? Might honestly be too much for it. <laughs> This might take a bass topwater bite, eh? I see what you're doing now. You're just spamming it in just yeah. to try and make sure they can't see it too good. There is zero action in this thing. Maybe if I just work them out a little bit, maybe. <laughs> you're trying to stretch them? Stretch them out. Oh, there. I wonder if you put them in like boiling water. Oh! <laughs> Brother, you worked them out. No wonder this is stiff. If they would have started moving, they'd have come off, you know? 
<laughs> Good <laughs> grief. The GoPro was on. I was barely moving in things, so to be honest with you, kind of speaks to the, the quality of this lure. I don't think that hurt the action at all. I don't think that hurt it at all. It might have helped you. It might have. So we've caught some fish on our small baits up to this point. But the thing about this challenge is not only are we progressing in the size of our baits, meaning them getting smaller, it's also making it harder on ourselves to catch bigger fish. And the further we get into this challenge and don't catch a big fish, the less likely it is that we're going to prove everybody wrong. <laughs> no, no chance. Uh. If you guys would, drop me a comment right now. Don't give up, Tate, because I'm not going to give up. Yet. Now we're on to this little baby right here. This is a tiny little what I call rooster tail. This is actually a panther martin. Pretty much just a little inline spinner. While this isn't completely unheard of, as in how big it is, what we're going to be using later in this video is going to be insanely small. The baits are only getting smaller from here, but we're going to try to catch a nice rainbow trout using this right here. Now, rainbow trout is going to be tough to catch in here. It does have them in here, and they are stocked. It's been months since the last time they've been stocked, and plus, people take them out of here like crazy. So, there literally might only be like one or two trout throughout this whole stream that we're going to be fishing. But if a bait's going to pull it off, I think the little panther martin's going to do it. We're going to go down through here, toss it around, see if we can catch a trout, and who knows? We may hook into a giant. That's what we're going for. Big fish on little baits. Start casting. I'm dropping this bait down, and these little men are are just going hard after it. I could just about catch one of those. This water is absolutely frigid. This is August, so everything is really hot still. It's really humid out. But this water is probably what? Like 40, 50 degrees? So here we go. First cast. Oh. Oh. I had a minner on. I had a minner on right there. That's a pretty big bait for the minners. I'm not going to lie. They're chasing it. They're chasing, They're chasing it. it. Look at all them. Look at all. Oh my God. You have a whole school of minners. You just about got one to eat it. We get a big minner on here, even a big sucker. That would be ridiculous. Minners actually fight pretty hard. We've hit a couple deep holes at this point. The trout are most likely going to be in those deep holes. There's a ton of just like little skinny water that the trout most likely are not living in. Like this stuff, as you can see as I'm flashing my spongebob crocs used to be james's by the way he gave them to me tate was absolutely obsessed with them and i felt kind of bad so oh, i gave them to tate we're just skipping all this whoa we're just skipping all this and we're just going straight to the big holes i wonder if there's a lure like small enough to actually catch a minner we might just have something in our bag wait really what'd you pick up i got something i didn't show you well i'm excited to see it I'm really disappointed we didn't catch any trout in the creek because there are some big trout that people catch out of those creeks. And trout love small lures. I really feel like that was a good chance that we end up blowing to catch a truly big fish, a trophy fish even. But now we're heading to a place that has more species. The great thing about the spillway is there's all kinds of species down here. There's some giant fish down here. And if we're gonna catch a giant fish on a small bait, it very well could be down here. And we're using this thing right here, just like a little inline spinner. Same thing we used at the trout stream. Unfortunately, we could not catch a trout, but you never know, we may pull one out of here. I'm trying not to step on a danger noodle. Oh, I thought I was got, brother. Man, it is steep. Oh, yeah. Brother, if you could find a way to get down there that's not through the freaking mountains. It doesn't look that bad right there. It's the it's the ascension up. Well, us, us bigger guys, you know, it's gravity is not our friend. This trail is not made for big daddies. Big daddies are not made for this trail. Are we rolling up to the spillway. The spillway looks nice. The water's kind of low. I've said this in past videos, but one of the biggest fish I've ever hooked was right here in this spot. I did not get him in, and I hooked him on this right here. A little inline spinner. What's that? Looks like a big old catfish looking thingy. Somebody is fishing for something big. That's what we want to catch. Exactly. Looks like somebody has got a trout line set up here. Maybe two or three of them. We're not going to mess with them. We're going to leave them be and I'm going to try to not get this thing hung up. You can actually cast this sucker pretty good. This one does have a little bit more weight, but the overall profile is smaller. Oh, right there. There it is, get it in the boat. Let's freaking go right at the bank, baby. Oh my God, that dude smoked it out of nowhere. That was an epic bite. He destroyed this thing. He choked it, look at that. How about that, guys? Nice little bass. We had to do a little bit of surgery on him, but he's gonna be perfectly fine. Hooked him in the tongue. All right, there you go. Okay, there you go, he's good. Right there on the little bait, right at the bank. So that has got this one knocked out. Now we're on to literally the smallest bait I've ever thrown. I've thrown this in the past, and this thing is so small, it only has room for one treble hook. And don't forget, we do have more to go. So I'm gonna throw baits in this 
this video that I have never thrown before, and it's gonna be personal records on how small they are. Think there's anything in here to eat that? What? What is that guy? A uh, quarter of a foot diver crankbait? That's like a little nugget. We're gonna throw this little guy around. It's got a little baby bass, I believe, pattern on that. It looks pretty cool. Now, how's this thing gonna run in the water? That's the big question. And our goal is to actually catch something really big on this. Let's we'll start giving it a dangle. How does it swim? I can't even see. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, it swims okay. If you reel it just the right amount, you're gonna be fine. But if you get too fast, it's just gonna blow out to the top. Fish on, fish on. Oh, what is, what is that? Oh, oh, oh son. What in the world? Oh, it's a bass. It's a boat. Let's break it go. Oh, he's not in the boat yet. Oh my God, he's throwing the, the single hook everywhere. All I started doing, so when I was reeling it, it wasn't working right, but I started kind of popping it, working like a jerk bait. He busted. Look at the size of that bait compared to that little fish. 10 pounders only, baby. Well, more like 10 ounces, but you know. Got that hook job right there. Just about missed him. Not a giant fish, but he's pretty healthy. If you guys have never caught fish out of the creek, they're used to running water and they're just really strong. They fight harder. This little guy put up a little fight on the ultralight. I don't know about you, but I think I'm gonna throw this around just for a couple more times. Bro, it looks like it's fun. I think we can catch something bigger. And that's the goal is to catch a giant on these small baits. If you think you can get it done, I say go for it. Oh, fish on, fish Oh, on, there you go. Fish on, fish on. Oh, you gotta, you gotta be easy on him. Gotta be easy. Easy. <laughs> All right, well this spot produced for us, but there's some little holes down through this creek and I've caught some big fish down there too. Right now the goal is just to get across this without falling over. No, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? That's the goal. Oh. Brother, it was right when I switched it up and started reeling. That bass come out of nowhere. I've had a ton of bites on this thing. And even though I've already caught a fish, I really want to catch another one because I've got tons of short strikes. I really feel like this could be a good bait to use out here at the creek. And fish are interested in it. Fish on. Fish on. What is that? He just barely got a hold of it. That looks like a green sunfish or some sort of hybrid. These things actually kind of look like bass with their mouth. Look how big their mouth is. And they are literally some of the most aggressive fish out there. That's why he ate this. There we go. We caught actually two fish on this and I thought this would be a tough bait. I thought it was gonna be tough, but it was easy. Next spot. James, the thing about the mountain, it's about the climb. Fight it, James. I'm in four low. I'm still spinning my tires. This next rig is pretty unique. And of course, it's even smaller. This is a Sabiki rig. As you can see, there's no plastic on it. I guess this isn't plastic. It's like some kind of like little plastic, I guess. But it's just super small. And I think our best chance to catch something on this is probably right here at the creek. As you can see, it's a pretty simple rig. But what makes this thing so unique is that it has a bunch of baits on it. And this one literally has like five or six lines coming out from the main line. The baits are still small, but they're just all connected. It's kind of like an A-rig of the micro fishing world. So we got the Sabiki rig down here at the creek. Now we have a chance at a giant sucker, a big chub minner, and we even have another shot at a trout. And I would love nothing more than to catch a trout on this, but we don't know what we're gonna catch, so we might as well start throwing it. And that could be interesting. Oh, it casts pretty good. Is that it? Come oh yeah, it is. Oh, they're chasing it. Those little pieces of flash on there, yeah. I guess kind of look like little insects or something like that. That's what they eat. They're about it. So there's actually some bigger ones there over are here. Some bigger ones. Oh, 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 oh. Do you have oh. one? We got it. Oh, get him, get him, we get him, get him. <laughs> Let's freaking go. <laughs> Dude. Oh man, well that took honestly a little longer than what I thought. Hooked him right through the nose though. That's great. Just right couldn't there. stand the Sabiki rig. Nice little chug. That's not a bad one at all. Not a bad one at all. That's about probably like eight inches or so, and we'll get him back. But now, Sabiki Rig is off the list. We're moving on to the smallest bait of this challenge. You guys are not gonna believe this. And now it's time to break out the smallest bait that I've ever seen. This right here is a size 22 hook. I'm willing to bet that most of you have never even seen a bait this small, probably never even conceived anything like this in your minds. Needless to say, this is gonna be an absolute challenge. And remember, we're trying to catch the biggest fish possible. And now we're on our last leg. This is the last chance that we have, and if if I were to catch a giant fish on this tiny hook, my life would be complete. I don't think that I could do anything else in life. Becoming president would not even top that. This is what we've all been waiting for. Right here's the hook that we're about to use and try to catch a fish. Right here is the plastic that we're gonna use. Now you might be thinking, well that plastic isn't unbelievably small. 
That's because we're not using this whole plastic. We're literally going to take this and we're just going to break it off. And I'm actually going to have to hold this hook with the pliers to make this happen. I don't even know if the camera can pick this up. You can't even hardly see. Oh, there we go. Do not move. I've got it in focus. I'm trying. I'm trying to make it happen. Now, that right there is what we're working with. We may have to re-rig that, but... You can barely see. Look how small it is. <laughs> James, that <laughs> is tiny, is tiny. bro. tiny. The truth is, I don't know what we're going to catch with this. And by golly, I've just got enough time on my hands to try to find out. I'm be casting this thing around we might have to add a small split shot that's not part of the bait that is part that's just weight because it's going to be difficult to cast this thing and the only line that we can fit through the eyes of these hooks is two pound line and the two pound line barely even fits through there it's close it it's is really like close. a one to one fit we're going to get this thing rigged up and start casting see if we can catch one all right here we go guys we have got the little bait on this rod this is the first attempt at casting it brutal that is brutal <sighs> James, brother, this is gonna be a this is gonna be tough. You're getting a little bit of distance with it, and it ever so slowly sinks. I mean, really, you gotta fly. I really think that we can catch something on this. We just gotta get a little split shot. We might have to run up here to the uh, the tackle shop, bro. That actually will get bit. That looks pretty solid. James has got us a split shot. I'm gonna put that on there. I don't have any pliers, so I'm just gonna do this with my teeth and get her on there the best I can. There we go. Slides a little bit, but it's okay. Now that should be a little bit more castable. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm just gonna try to give it some action, pop it around. That looks so freaking good, brother. I wanna cast up in some of these trees and stick ups. A lot of times there's bass, catfish, bluegill, crappie, all kinds of stuff just hiding up in this junk, just waiting on something to come by. And boy, oh boy, do I got a small little snack for you. A little appetizer. Oh. Man, I have gotten bites on this thing. I, we are going to catch a fish on this. I am pretty confident in that. I just lost my split shot. Brother, we only got two of those left. This sucks, brother. This is tough. I, I'm getting bites. I don't have any of you guys have seen because I realized I was filming in time warp mode or whatever the heck that is. I have gotten bites on this thing. Stuff's eating it. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to penetrate the mouth of a panfish or shad or whatever it is that we might catch. I feel like these are little green sunfish that are eating this. Just super aggressive fish. It's almost like the hook can't even get them. I think I'm just going to start letting them eat it just a little better. Maybe just wait a minute because setting the hook is literally doing nothing. Oh. J oh, James! Oh, oh you got, one? got one! Oh, my God! I got one! Oh, dude, my God! Oh, dude, my God! It's a bass! There he is. Oh. Oh, I gotta be careful. I gotta be super careful. I did not do a, a hook set. Oh, I got him. him! I got him! Oh my God, let's freaking go! Dude! Let's freaking go! He swallowed it, James. That is the only reason that we caught this fish. He absolutely choked it. He went for the little micro wacky rig. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Guys, I've got so many bites on this bait. I think it's all been panfish up to this point. I can't believe that we just caught a bass. This is not the giant fish that we've been going for throughout this video, but you know what? James knows all too well. Size, does it really matter? Probably not. It's a fun time on an ultralight setup. A little tiny hook. How many people can say that they have caught a fish on a size 22 hook, much less a bass. This is a largemouth bass. This is not a goldfish. That's essentially <laughs> the same as catching a 13 pounder on a regular hook. I mean, I'll take it. I feel like I proved all the haters wrong. You guys comment down below if you think just that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to click right here if you want to see us fish a tournament with a Dollar General rod. And YouTube really thinks you'd like this video. You should check it out. We'll see you on the next one. There he is. I got him. I got him. I got him. <laughs> got him right there in the bottom lip on this little chub.